verse, um, from verse 25 to 30. <clears throat> and Lindsay, if you would like a, a title now, I shall give it. The Religious Temple or House of His Nature. Luke 15, verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field. <clears throat> and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. That's kind of funny that he doesn't even know what that means. Didn't ask what's going on. He asked, what does this mean? It's called rejoicing with the heart of the father over the son, elder son. That's what that means. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Okay, so, so talking about the house, the father's house, the house. And the house, uh, we, we call it the temple of God. We call it all these kind of things. I call this the religious temple or the house of his nature because there is uh, a more important thing in relationship to the house, I believe, even in this story. Because you have the, you have the prodigal son and he's in the house and, and then he goes out and he, he's out pursuing really kind of his own life and therefore his own house. <clears throat> um, and in a sense, this vessel, he's going to inhabit his own house. He's going to be the Lord. Remember we talked about that in um, First Peter where it talked about um, the, um, uh, uh, the, the Lord shepherding our souls. And I that all started with the Spirit of God some probably a month ago saying to me, showing me that scripture, reminding me of it, and then said, quoted it this way, my soul is my shepherd. And that, that, should, that almost makes me cry. It is so sad to treat him that way, to not honor our shepherd the only true way that he wants to shepherd. I know, I know, I know what Christianity does. I know what probably you do a lot is that you let him be your shepherd when it comes to um, where should I go or what should I do or what is, you know, Lord, you just guide me, guide me, you know. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, and I remember when the Holy Spirit started sharing this with me. I didn't write it all down, but he started sharing it with me. And he reminded me instantly after he said what he did. And he said, uh, he reminded me of Song of Solomon. And it says, draw us, we will run. And the Spirit of God said, when, the, when our soul is the shepherd and we go with our soul, we do not immediately run to him to sh be the shepherd of our soul. We don't turn. We don't repent. We go. We might feel bad. We might say, oh, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. But, you know, you do that enough and then you just get used to it. And you don't even think about it. I mean, it's just, it's just your soul is your shepherd. And it's going to be your shepherd until something drastic happens. And what better thing to happen than it break your heart? that you, you know, you, that I, that we've been usurping the one who wants to shepherd our soul, you know, into his nature and his reactions, his words. Shepherd me into those things, Lord. Shepherd my soul, Lord. So anyway. The prodigal son is out shepherding his own soul, and he's dwelling in his house, his building, his tent, his tabernacle, his body. <clears throat> and um, it was never meant for that. It was never meant for that. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil ended that little trip to the tree of life. Um, and then the elder son 
stayed in the house. He stayed in the house, as it were, but he never conformed to the house his father built. In other words, he never became the house. He had the external to himself. He, ha he had the trappings of it around him, but he, he wasn't the house. He never conformed. He never got it. He never got it. And you know, I mean, he's he was angry. You know, was it legitimate? No, it's not legitimate. That is totally the exact opposite of people who claim to have Christ revealed in them to react that way, no matter how bad it is around us. Now, that's the truth. That is the truth. It shouldn't matter. You know? And while Jesus walked, you don't see him reacting a whole lot, but when he was on the cross, you see him saying, this is it right here. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is where you're going to see the son. Father, forgive them. Did you know officially, I think in the United States, that the month of February, which we're in right now, is the month of forgiveness? You know, sounds good. Let's, let's start. Amen. Amen. Make a list. God will check it twice to see, you know, if you're lying or nice. So we are supposed to be the house, the house of God, or I wrote it a little differently. The whole point of the temple to house the living, period, capital, living, the living. You have Jesus in you? Oh, yeah, he's in there. How come we never see him? <laughs> you know, especially in crisis, how come we never see him? I'll tell you why we don't see him, because it's okay, because we build around us a culture that allows it and doesn't protect one another. It doesn't stand up for one, doesn't fight for one another. We build a culture that allows it here and here and here, and then pretty, pretty soon we promote what is clearly not that and disregard what is moving into that spirit of the lamb because that's what the world honors the world honors what will declare itself what will claim it's the best what claims that it's you know whatever that promoting itself as something that is reprehensible to the Lord. It's not the Lord, so it's reprehensible to the Father. That's not my son. I'm your son. Lift holy hands and put your hands down because they're not holy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, lifting holy hands. It didn't say just lifting hands. Just, yeah, just shout to the Lord, Lord, I'm so good. Or, you know, usually what we do is primarily go. Anybody read my article in the newsletter this past month? You know? This current one, yeah. About coming boldly to the throne of grace. You know, how come you never have anybody just say it? <laughs> what it means instead of, you know, well, you know, let's just go to the throne of grace here over your needs. You know? How about let's take you to that throne, see what you're supposed to be sitting on the throne, start acknowledging that, and have boldness. Boldness to stand up and to say, we want the living Jesus, and we want him now, and we want him here or here. I mean, you have to start here always, you know. It's always here, you know. Um, it's the only thing that's going to make this place a house of God or this place. It is. It's the only thing. 
Okay, so, um, and I, the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me say, add God to that. The whole point of the temple is to house the living capital. And he made me meditate on it. Is he living? Is he living enough that he, I mean, is he living enough that he's really, truly by his nature in control? Or is he living enough where every once in a while he steps in like in front of you and goes, okay, you know, let me, you know. Or is he fake living, but we're living. And this was what the elder son was doing. That's why I'm sharing this. This is what the elder son was doing. It was fake living. And it all showed up in the crisis. And it does. It always shows up in the crisis. Because... We're a selfish lot. Well, that's, you know, well, Randy, you know, you're not going to encourage anybody that way. We're a selfish lot. And Jesus isn't. So let's go for Jesus. My God. See, it's not that bad if Jesus is in the center. If it's about him, if it's about me, I'm a selfish lot. I need to go to the throne of grace. I need to tell him all my sins and get him, you know, and I'm having trouble with this and this ain't working out and da 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 And he's going... You're not supposed to be in here with your earth life. This isn't, worth, this isn't the place for that. Does he hear those kind of prayers? Yes, I think he does. I think he hears our prayers. But you don't, you don't defile the holy of holies where you're supposed to acknowledge all that all this was just a shadow of out, out there. See, the holy of holies and the the presence of God in there was not fake. That was a real God in there from the very beginning, you know, until, until another priesthood came along and had a couple of sons that weren't sons. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Eli. Another priesthood came along, and God said, I'm getting, I'm getting my, I'm getting out of here. We always think that was a tragedy. God's going, hey, at least these, these, these false idols of Dagon and the others are bowing down to me. I mean, I'm getting more from them than I was getting from y'all. You know what I mean? You know? And the only, the only time he was ready to come back was when David came along and said, we're going to put him in something separate from the rest of that. We're going to make the holy of holies the thing that it's all about. Because we're making the Lord what it's all about. <laughs> Didn't you ever wonder why he, David set up all these ministries and of singing and everything that were in there day and night and they were in shifts? Memorial ministry. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. It's not about worship. Constant worship. It's not about constant worship. It's about memorial ministry. Eli didn't do that. His sons defiled the whole thing. But they were still called sons. They were still called sons. Well, you know, until we see God's perspective, our Lord, until we see God's perspective, it's not going to be pretty. And, and, that, and we'll never see God's perspective unless a heart and a brokenness to not just get after him, but to stay after it until, till, till he says get up. You know, I'm, no, I'm not going to say that because it, it, people would see it wrong. But to, to stay at it until he raises you up. That's what Jesus did in the, in the tomb. You stay down until he raises you. What's well, been me more than three days? You know, I've got a life. I've got to get after it. You know? <laughs> yeah. All the things that, you know, makes him go, okay. Yeah. We're going to spend time with the Philistines and Dagon. I hadn't seen him in a, year, in a couple of years. All right. Sorry. Um, so I wrote, but he didn't just want any kind of house. So this is the Lord. Any old house will do. Your house or yours or yours or yours. Or yours. Any, any old house will do. When the temple was to be made, the architect, capital, capital, had his own blueprint. 
the Lord. When the temple was, he had it all figured out. He gave it to David. David didn't come up with it. He gave it to David. He has a plan for what his house should look like. See to it that you make it according to the pattern that you saw above. He has a pattern. And he doesn't want to live in any old shack or in any huge mansion that is totally, totally not what he had in mind. That, you know, that would be like somebody paying a, somebody to build, and, and they, they're an architect, and they have the plans for their house, and they build something completely different. They would go, this is not what I wanted. Well, where's my reward? Where's my pay? No reward for you. <laughs> you know? I mean, this isn't difficult, and it's not hard. This is strictly a thing of the heart. It is a thing of the heart. When the, when the heart turns to the Lord, the veil gets rent. When I was in Bible school, I kept searching. Then I kept seeing stuff in me that was contrary to that. I'd come back and say, it's not done yet. I remember, you remember me uh, several different times over the years that we were there, over the time that we were there, where I thought, you know, I got it now. I've seen it. I know this is the revelation of Christ. And I would evidence things that were contrary to that. And I said, I refuse. That doesn't mean that you get perfect before but it means that there's certain things that happen by his life, and you know it's him, not you, and I'm not talking about God touching you and healing your hand or doing something like that. I'm talking about him, him. And, and, I, and I went a long time, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and I, I could tell you stories they had rules where you, we lived in a dorm where there was no air conditioning and they had rules that you couldn't have the lights on after 10 o'clock. And they worked you up till 10 o'clock. And so I'm under a hot blanket so that they don't see the light and tell me to quit searching the scriptures. But I said, I've got to have Jesus. I've got to have Jesus. And I feel the same way right now. I've got to have Jesus. I need Jesus, and I need it to be him so that I know he is content and not what's well, easy for me to be content. It's easy for us to be content. Oh, oh, this is good. Thank God we did this. You know, he's going, you just started, you know. And it would be, you know, be like Esther going in, you know, and, you know, and so, 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 you know, okay, well, you know, it's, yeah, no, 30, 30 minutes. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I soak, you know, that, you know, it's hard to soak, you know, I mean, that would be easy, you know, just sit in the bath and just go, oh, yes, I wish I was Esther. Well, you are, the bath was a shadow. The word of God is your bath. You're supposed to be washing in the water of the word, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. I mean, I still like that idea. And yet, that wasn't even the end. That wasn't the goal. All of that was for something that can't happen if you didn't soak long enough. Amen. And guess what? It, it, well, let's just say it hadn't happened. It hadn't happened. The heart of God and the plan of God that he had didn't happen because we didn't soak enough. Well, at least there's some people going there, man. <laughs> Well, we didn't. Okay, now this is speaking as the guy that was the pastor at the time. We didn't soak and we did not find the end of what God had for us. And he's never gonna bring it about. Either he's never gonna bring it about or he'll never bring it about until we get back in line with what that is. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Because that's, that's the truth. And the proof will be, time will tell, if I'm a lying prophet or if, I, if I've heard from God. I heard from God then, and I'm still hearing from God on this. Anyway, all right, so we're probably way over, aren't we? What, you, I'm not even listening on the clock you, you, can, the you can't be doing that. How much? Tr Good. Okay. 
We are supposed to be made according to pattern. We are supposed to be made according to his specifications. And then I put, is our house in order? Is our house in order? Whether that's individually or collectively, or what, is our house in order? All right, so here we go. If a person gets ready to die, and they know they're going to die, the Bible says this, that they put their house in order. Okay. Well, we're not talking about physical death here. But is our house in order? Is it in order? Well, there's, there's, no, there's no way that we can say within ourselves, yes, unless we've seen the order. And what did I put here? Gosh, see, there's so much stuff here. <laughs> there's no way. If the, here's, here's, here's the summary of this. If the architect has handed us a blueprint of something, if, he, if that's real, and we don't follow the Lord in what was in his heart, our house is not in order. It's as simple as that. Okay, well, what does that mean? Condemnation, you know, I know, I hear that a bunch. We should be in condemnation. No, we shouldn't be in condemnation. We should say, we should rise up and say, we will have the Lord. We will yes. get the Lord. We want the Lord. I want the Lord. I want the Lord. We want the Lord. We want the Lord. You know, get your silverware. We want the Lord. We want the Lord. We want the Lord. We let it rise and let it be a heart that says, I'm going after the Lord with all my spirit, all my heart, mind, soul, body. It says, first commandment, you can't get away from it. Love him. And he calls love, lay down your life to get it. I, I am crucified with Christ so that he might get what he wants, a house that he can live in. I'll be dead <laughs> as long as he'll live. But just saying, well, he's living and it's, not, and it's not him, I would say that's not good. Or it's blasphemy. <laughs> you know? Or it's just religiously wrong, but God's just with us. <laughs> Father, we just ask you to stir us by the Spirit of God not to change or do this or expectations or man or Randy or any of that stuff, but stir us to get back on track with what you and your spirit and everyone that was here at the time knew it was you and it never finished. It never finished. And I'm asking you to forgive us. I'm asking you to forgive us and I'm asking you to have mercy not just on us, but for Jesus' sake, for Jesus' sake. And so, so we're asking you to do what in some ways seems impossible. But with you, there's nothing that's impossible. If our hearts, if our hearts turn to the Lord, that veil will be rent. And we will enter into something that you had in mind after all the years of faithfulness and love and giving and, and, and pouring out and searching that we've done before you. We will not finish the race, but we will have reached the place that you wanted us to be at at this time. We believe that, and we know, we have examples in the scriptures when they came out of out of captivity and they had not they had not celebrated a, a, one of the feasts father and they were already a month past it and you blessed them and said go ahead and celebrate it in the second month wow. and they celebrated it with joy and it was real 
and they realized it wasn't the date, it was it, their hearts. And they were ready for it. And you said, go ahead, let's do it. Let's, like the father and the prodigal, let's make merry together. Let's rejoice together and eat this offering. Eat this Passover in that case. So we, we love you. We long for you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.